Welcome to Marriage and Life Stories with Can See Me. Thank you so much for coming once again, all the returning guests. And to you who are coming for the first time, thank you so much. I pray that you will remember to subscribe if it is your first time, if you have not subscribed. And to all of you who have already subscribed, thank you. And you don't have to subscribe many times. You subscribe only once to just one video and that's it. I know there are some people who have been telling me they subscribe to every video. No, you subscribe only once, but you keep liking, liking and liking the videos. Okay, uh, today I want to share with you a personal story of how I, I woke up one day out of my selfish behavior, out of my bad, you know, my complication as a young wife. And there are so many rules and there are so many regulations I had placed in the house. When they were not met, I finally decided to, you know, pick my bags, pack, hoping that this, my husband was going to tell me, oh, please don't go, stop. Let's see what he did when I was doing all this drama. You know, it is so common that when you're a young wife, you get so dramatic, hmm? so dramatic. You're married, you want a man to include you in every conversation. Am I lying, some of you? You want him to talk, my wife and I. If he doesn't say that, that is a crime. If he's talking about, you know, the man is used to having his things, my car, my house, and everything. When he says my house, my car, that becomes a battle. Yes, I fought such battles. Why did you say my car? You know, now you don't even understand that you're married. We fight over those things. You go to a place, a poor man is still learning how to be married, and uh, you really want him to know every detail about married life. He's still trying to come to terms with the fact that he's no longer free like he used to be. And so, if he doesn't introduce you, my wife and I, it's a battle. If he doesn't talk about our car, it's a fight. If he doesn't um, think about uh, pulling a chair for you, you've gone for a function, and he goes to talk to his friends while you're at the wedding, that's also another war. I fought that one. I would ask, did you bring me here to, sh to shame me? You know, you just brought me here and then you went to sit with your family members. And I would fight, I would fought. I fought senseless battles, I fought useless battles, I fought self-esteem battles, I fought even the things I didn't know. And so I was always stressed, 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 and stressed. Stressed about what? I want to police him. I want to know where he is, like I'm his mother. You know, I think I had even turned like a monitoring spirit, like many young people do. How do you go and you're not telling me where you're going? Who are you with? Hmm? Where did you eat? How come you don't want to eat my food? Who is talking to you on the phone? Okay, in our time there was no phone. So we never thought about the phone. And so, after I had exhausted my fighting, I woke up one day and it was a wedding anniversary. I think it was either wedding anniversary or my birthday. And, uh, and the gentleman forgot, you know, he forgot about it. And he didn't even think about it. He didn't remember that there was an anniversary to be celebrated. And to me, that was war. Instead of asking politely to tell him, okay, it was my birthday and you've just forgotten it. I just told myself, enough is enough. See, he doesn't even think about me. Maybe he has other women. Now let me tell you ladies. The moment you start telling your husband, that he has other women out there, I guarantee you he'll get them because he will be interested. And then he will not be fearing anything. After all, you're suspecting him when they are not there. And by the time any smart girl shows around, you'll be in for it. So stop telling your husbands that I am sure you have other women there. That is not a story that you want to, to bring out all the time. And so I decided that enough was enough. I had policed. I had talked, I had quarreled, I had done everything. And for him, he was very peaceful. He's a very peaceful man. You will say 10 things, he will, he will answer back one with one word and very strong statement. And so I decided I, I needed to pack. But guess what? As I was packing like any normal woman, 
I already thought, you know, that he should follow me. That he was going to stop me. He was going to beg me and apologize. Now, this time round, he kept quiet. He kept quiet. I packed my bags. I was hitting the doors. I was, you know, the wardrobe, pulling, and things were falling down. And in my heart, I was like, I, I wish he can say, don't go, or he can hold my bag. He didn't. And after parking, and uh, I went out of the house, got on a border border, I reached somewhere along the way. It was even at night, I think. And so when I got around the, around the corner, it was at night, I asked myself, where am I going? Why am I leaving my marriage after two years? Imagine I've even left my child there, a two-year-old. Mm -mm. At that moment, I told myself, let me go back with all the shame. I carried myself back, came back home. And when I got to the house, the poor man was like, oh, did anything wrong happen to you? He was still concerned that... Uh, that uh, Something had happened to me, and, and he was so caring. And I looked him in the face. I told myself, Grace, you must tone down on this your pride, on this your selfishness, on this your anger and bitterness, on this your quarrelsome. You talk, 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 nonstop. And so I sat in the meeting with myself, with me, and I. Me, myself, and I. And I purposed one thing. That whatever I wish for others, okay, do unto others what you would have them do for you. That moment, I wrote that minute to myself that I will do for my husband what I would have him do for me. I wanted to be treated like a queen. I wanted to be made a priority in his life. I wanted to have gifts. I wanted to have so many good things around our relationship to be that romantic because for him, he was not those romantic things. And so those are the things that I wanted. And so I purposed when I came back that these are the things I'm going to do, the things that I want. I'll treat him like a king. I'll treat him like the way I want to be treated. If he doesn't know how to buy gifts, I will start by buying him the gifts. I remember one time I bought him a shirt. I saved the money. I was doing small, small job, and I saved the money and bought for him a shirt. It was 5000 And when I came, you know, like swelling, I have bought for you a gift. Then he asked me, what's the gift for? It's not Christmas. You know, I, I almost fainted. It's not Christmas because for him, he knew that the gifts were given at Christmas. I said, no, I was in town and I thought about you and I bought this for you. And he looked at it and, and something else that I purposed, I purposed to write small love notes, put them in his po po pocket. Even though he didn't want to show, but I would hide somewhere and see him read either in his shoe or in his pocket. And I would see him read and I would see him smile. Then I would know, yeah, today as he goes, it is my message that is going to ring in his mind. I did so many things that I wanted to be done to me. I bought for him cards. Now, to you ladies who do this investment for one week, or you buy one gift and you start quarreling, or you do two, about two, three things and for one month and you give up. I did this project for two years, nonstop. I would bring a gift, he's, you're not going to appreciate, but I will buy another one. I will do other things. And then one day, one beautiful day, and I didn't all just start buying gifts. I started taming myself. I knew I was talking too much, so the talking had to reduce. I knew I was so quarrelsome. I had to control my temper. I knew I was so insecure. I wanted to know who he was. I wanted to follow up on who his ex was. I wanted to know so many things like a monitoring spirit. And I told myself, my confidence is in the Lord. I am not going to follow him again. Uh, whoever, whatever happens, whether he goes back to his ex or not, I am not going to follow up. And when he realized the change in me, I remember one time he went and bought for me uh, a card. 
and telling me that he loves me. 30 years down the road, I still have that card. Uh, and he was talking about how special I am. I was like, mm hmm. Then he started buying me the gifts. Then he started doing all these other good things. After two years of investment, that's when I started receiving the returns. Two years of investment, I started receiving the returns. Two years of transforming myself, I stopped trying to change him completely. And I tried as much as possible to transform myself into a better person. And the results were massive. They were massive. I received the love. I received the, the goodness. I received the blessing. Now, let me tell you, today, okay, today, by the grace of God, I don't even have to ask for a gift. He will buy it. In fact, my problem right now is that he overspends on me. And I keep quarreling, please stop. If I need it, I'm going to ask you. He spends on my gifts. Whether he's in the country or out of the country, he will remember my gift, my birthday, and he will have someone deliver my cake. The birthday I quarreled for when I was two years back, two years in marriage. You know, there are so many good things that come as a reward of transforming yourself. And if there is any other message that I would want to give you, that is the message of transforming yourself first. And when the time for enjoyment comes, you will enjoy and enjoy and enjoy and enjoy, and there will be no stop to that enjoyment. Now, in the past video, the one of finances I was sharing with you, how out of anger I used to spend his money, spend, and when it is finished, I would tell him that, okay, the money is finished, and we would suffer together, and he would look at me and allow me to spend. And so, when I added all those things, I learned slowly, slowly, that the more humble I am, the more better I make myself, the more trusting I am of this man, it is me that is going to, to reap the reward. And by the grace of God, I am not complaining. We've been 30 years married in, in, in yes, 30 years in marriage. He still takes me for romantic getaways. He still buys the gifts. He still buys me everything that I need. What am I concluding with? Ladies, ladies, forget about transforming your husband. Transform yourself. Transform yourself. Do what you want him to do for you. Forgive even in advance if he has done something wrong. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you will reap the benefits. And so, if there is anything you can learn from this video, please learn. Make a good relationship if you're still young. If you're still old and things have already gone bad, you still can redeem it. Redeem your relationship and have a very beautiful old age growing together in love, in romance, and in all the things. And uh, for those who have not subscribed, please subscribe. And kindly like this video and uh, go through all the other videos as well and let us grow together by the grace of God. And for now, bye-bye.